So about twice a year, I shave a section of my legs because of an injury. And last year it was uh, a little bit of shin splint action. And so basically uh, with the plantar fasciitis, I'm massaging a lot and stretching. And I'm just now starting to tape my PF uh, using different techniques that I've learned. Hopefully it starts to help. Stay tuned, I'll keep you posted. But it's kind of funny because I really didn't understand why runners used to shave their legs. And a lot of my college teammates at the University of Colorado, boom, 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 we used, they used to shave their legs and I never quite understood why, but now I do. When you pull that tape off or you're getting a deep tissue massage, yeah, it kind of hurts. It kind of hurts. So anyway, that's what I was doing today. All right, we're going downtown for a run and then work and run and work and all that good stuff. So it's Monday, YouTube. Let's get this week. Let's get this week. Come on, YouTube. baby all right made it downtown all right gonna get a run in down here before talking about the running books tonight but i'm really trying to be intentional with my stretching so tip of the day you can go out and buy these rubber bands that are like really big rubber bands for stretching and i'll probably do that at some point but if you don't have the time or you don't have the money or you just need to use something really quick and especially if you're a parent these baby blankets work like a charm for stretching your leg and you're seeing me do it right now uh, in downtown Denver. Basically, it, stretch it, it can stretch really well and you can massage your foot in the process by just pulling it back and forth over the bottom of your foot. So if you have plantar fasciitis, anyway, it's working for me and I'm just pulling my leg back trying to stretch those hamstrings and the calves and everything. Oh, it hurts. Stretching hurts more than running by far. It's, 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 I need to be more intentional and consistent and persistent and patient with my stretching. Oh, so painful. All right, let's go run through downtown Denver. Come on. All right, we're gonna get to the running books in one second. Oh man, books, books, I love books. But before that, I gotta give a shout out to New Balance. Remember, as I'm purchasing these running shoes and reviewing them for you guys, I'm also reviewing running shoe stores and the customer service that I receive in these stores. And hopefully you're receiving great customer service at the running shoe stores that you frequent to take care of your feet and to make sure you're staying healthy. Well, I got a personal postcard in the mail from New Balance, handwritten, handwritten, like written out by hand. It's amazing. And it's from Taylor at the New Balance store. And she said, Seth, I am so glad you like those beacons. It will be a nice shoe for you to rotate with. Good luck getting ready for your next race. Come see us again if you need anything else. Taylor, that's amazing. That is the type of customer service that will get me back in the New Balance store. Now, of course, I need to love the shoes that I'm buying. And so far, so far I do love the New Balance beacons, but I just had to give a shout out and um, we'll see if a postcard shows up from other running shoe stores that I'm frequenting and buying shoes from. Anyway, I digress. Okay, books. 
I love books. True Love and I, when we first met, turns out we actually had about 20 duplicate books, maybe even maybe 30 duplicate books where we were reading the same books through college. Well, I know books are kind of, you know, a little archaic these days, but if you look around our house, we have books everywhere. We just love books. So, in addition, I, well, I love running books and there's many books and I want to share some of those books with you to help basically inspire you guys to learn about the sport that we all adore. Now, we're all busy. We don't always have time to read, but as I mentioned, no, I did not mention this yesterday. Basically, winter is made for reading. As the days get darker and it gets colder out and maybe we're not running quite as much, you know, instead of maybe 50 miles a week, we're running 35 miles a week. Anyway, winter is a great time to run to read running books. And so, I want to talk to you guys about my running book collection, but first, we got to get the books organized. We got to get them all. Okay, come on. Come on. And one of the books in this stack of running books changed my life forever. It really did. It changed the trajectory of my my life. And I'm going to talk to you about that book soon. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but it's amazing if we're open to the message, open to the story, and we're really entered into what is being communicated through the words on the page. Books can really change our lives forever. So it's really, I don't know, like I I know books, are, again, I've already said this, but the books are kind of becoming archaic or, you know, uh, antiquated. But I really believe that there's a good, good uh, tradition in reading and reading as often as we can. And I wish I could read more, especially running books. So I'm going to show you the stack of books. Um, and of course, the keyword of the day is books. All right, here's the stack. It's, it's not huge, but here's the stack. There you go, about 20 books, about 20 books, not too shabby, not too shabby. And again, there might be a few more tucked away somewhere, but all right, let's go out to the shed, talk about a few of these. We're gonna get to the running books in one second, one second, but first the comment, the comment of the week. I give a shout out to the best comment in the previous seven days every Monday. And this comment of the week goes out to Bryce from Strava. So either let's connect on Strava or you can comment here on YouTube. But this comment from Bryce is just like, wow. It's kind of a tough one, but it's inspiring. And so thank you, Bryce. He said this, Seth, I just wanted to say thank you for the motivation. In 2016, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and struggled to run even one nine minute, mi nine minute mile without gastrointestinal issues. Today I ran a 129 half marathon. I had low points during my training and flare ups, but your YouTube videos helped me get through them from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Bryce. Bryce, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story, for being open about your Crohn's disease and for fighting, <laughs> for fighting to run a 129 half marathon, a fast half marathon and like just keep fighting and like we're here for you. And I, I by you being open about your story, I guarantee other people listening right now and or reading comments down below, like they're going to see that you're overcoming your, your disease and it's like you're, you're inspiring people. So I don't know, man, just thank you for being open and thank you for the comment of the week. It's amazing. All right. Before we dive into the books real quick, I did run today in the turbos. They were amazing again, but I do just have to make it a, a, an observation about the insert. It's amazing. Just so you know, like the insole inside that, that you can pull out of the shoe. I know this is a little off topic, but I just had to mention that I did run in the turbos today and uh, this insert is well cushioned. It's just well cushioned. All right. That's, I just had to throw that in there. All right. On to the running books. And yes, the question of the day. What is your favorite running book? And maybe that is too difficult to answer because maybe you have more than one favorite running book. But if you can pick one, if you had to pick one, what would it be and why? Comment below and I am fascinated to hear your answers because I love running and I love reading. And so I'm always looking for more good running books to read. But it's kind of a hard genre of books to find. You know, it's not like they have a running book section in bookstores or on Amazon. It's, you know, so anyway, if you can drop ideas for me and everybody else watching this video, go down below and type out your answer. But 
Start scanning all those different answers from everybody else, and I bet you're going to get some really good Christmas ideas, right? Right? So, anyway, I want to talk about two books tonight. Not my favorite book. My favorite book is sitting right over there in the stack. The first book I just want to touch upon real quick is called In Quest of Gold, The Jim Ryan Story. As many of you probably know, Jim Ryan was the first American to break the four-minute mile. Big deal. And so when I was in middle school, my cross-country coach, basically, he taught me about Jim Ryan. And there was a documentary out there, very archaic, you know, old, not very well-filmed documentary on Jim Ryan. And I watched that documentary with my cross-country coach, and it planted a seed in me, guys. It planted a seed in me. Like, I had no clue that running was really even a sport and that people did it professionally. And so, anyway, this book, In Quest of Gold, is a great book. And so if you don't know the Jim Ryan story, I would strongly recommend picking up this book, In Quest of Gold. Great story about Jim Ryan. All right, so I want to mention one other book from my collection just for tonight. We could go on and on, right, all night long. But we're just going to do one more, and it's called The Perfect Mile. And to all the viewers over in the UK, shout out to the UK runners out there. There's so many of you now commenting from London and from Liverpool and different parts of the UK. And so welcome. Uh, this is all about your guy, Roger Bannister. I'm sure many of you have already read this book. It's called The Perfect Mile by Neil Bascom. Uh, Bascom. And essentially a great book, one of the more well-written running books out there. Like it's a really well, well-written story. Uh, I, I really enjoyed reading this book called The Perfect Mile. Would highly recommend it if you're looking for a, a Christmas gift for a runner out there. And a side story real quick on this book. I read this book to the track team in high school on the bus rides like where i lived our bus rides were like four hours sometimes to our track meets because we lived you know up in the mountains in colorado and so i was really into running and i wanted other people to fall in love with running in high school and so i actually bought this book in high school i wonder if i have a date written i do not anyway i bought this book in high school and read it to the high school track team as we travel, no, you know, the sprinters didn't really care to listen. And so all the distance runners, we like, you know, huddled all the milers and two milers and, you know, some of the 800 meter runners, we huddled around and read this book. And anyway, great book, The Perfect Mile on Roger Bannister. Highly recommend this book. Many more books that we could talk about. I will talk about my favorite book soon, maybe in the next week. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Stay tuned. I don't want to dive into it yet because it had such a profound impact on my life. I wanted. I want to make an entire video just about this book. So we'll do that another day. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching, for commenting, subscribing. And again, the question of the day, I cannot wait to read your answers. So I will be typing back. Make sure you check back in. Ah, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Running, reading, running, reading. It's both good. It's both good things. Both good things. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thank you again to Bryce for the amazing comment. See you guys.